Uh, today I've got something very important to share with you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got some really exciting news to share with you uh, today on my channel and now I've been sitting on this news for probably about anywhere between one to three months. Um, now Mr. Zhu, uh, the CEO and owner of Sil uh, CNC Machines over in China, uh, recently told me about a new product range that he's releasing in the X7 size CNC mill. Now they've decided to uh, disband in the cast iron structure that the machine sits on and go fully um, epoxy granite. Okay, so this is pretty exciting news for, for a CNC machine um, at this level of the marketplace to introducing epoxy granite into their product range, I think, you know, uh, quite innovative to be honest with you. Now you may be wondering why do they want to go epoxy granite? Well, I'll, I'll read off some of the stuff here that Mr. Sue has uh, provided me. Now, if you're unfamiliar with epoxy granite, uh, instead of traditional, you know, cast steel uh, manufacturing processes where they get a, uh, you know, a, a sand mold and, you know, pour molten hot metal into it, um, I, I believe they could be going this way. I, I haven't been told, but it, look, this could be China trying to clean up on some of those dirty industries, so such as uh, the casting industries and that sort of thing. I'm un I, you know, I can't validate that, but that's just one of my ideas. The, there's probably an incentives for them to go a little bit more cleaner. Now, the great thing with epoxy granite is there's lots of other high-end CNC manufacturers going down that way uh, with some of their machines, not all of them. So, you know, DMG and Akuma, and they, they spring to mind. There's a company here in, in Melbourne, Australia, they actually make CNC grinding machines. And if you follow um, Alfred Lyon on Instagram, uh, he's a tool maker over in um, USA. They use these Anchor CNC grinding machines and they're all epoxy granite as well. So some of the benefits uh, with epoxy granite are thermal stability. Min mineral castings, as you know, if, if, you've got a, if you've got cast steel, they will grow or shrink depending on temperature of the day. Epoxy granite is much more thermal uh, stable, okay? Uh, there's no corrosion to worry about, so it's not going to rust on you, the machine, because it's actually made from this epoxy granite. Uh, better absorption of vibration as well. Um, so, you know, as you know, when you're taking big heavy cuts, especially in, in steels or tool steels, that this can vibrate and resonate through the machine. So it's been shown that epoxy granite absorbs those uh, much better than what the old cast would do. Now, I think one of the most important things is, uh, is the accuracy. Now, one of the, one of the other things uh, Sile are claiming is that it's much better for the environment and actually reduces the carbon footprint, okay? Um, Obviously, because you're not, you don't have to run a big smelter to melt all down that that cast steel and then pour it and that sort of stuff. Now, the sizes of the machine are roughly the same. Uh, it's roughly the same footprint as the previous machine. Now, you've got to remember, I'm sitting in front of my machine. Mine's an older model, an earlier version. They've had probably two or three design changes since I've received my machine, and that was predominantly around the enclosure. Now I know the new epoxy granite machine is roughly still on the same footprint. So if you were to stand in front of the machine across this way, it's roughly 1.5 meters or 1500 millimeters. Um, I'll put the conversions up down below on the screen here as I'm telling you uh, in inches. Uh, the height of the machine is uh, 1960, so 1.96 meters tall. And the depth of the machine going back is 1680, so 1.680 of a meter. Like I said, I'll translate those dimensions down below for you in inches. Working table size is pretty, pretty much similar to the one I have here. It, it, and actually it's grown in the Y, okay? Um, so they're, they're stipulating that you've got uh, 400 millimeters in X travel, which is 15.7 inches. Uh, y axis has grown. It looks like it's grown about 30, 40 millimeters. Uh, so they're now, stip they're now stating that they can get 300 millimetres in the Y axis and in Z, 380 in the, in the Z axis. Now, just to reiterate that, so X axis, 15.7 inches, Y axis, 11.8 inches, Z axis, 14.9. So 
I think there's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of growth there that I see from these uh, specifications here. Roughly about an inch, you gain an extra inch in Y and roughly gain an inch in, in the Z height as well. Now, spindle, spindle power is roughly the same. They, they're stating three kilowatt spindle motor. Uh, which is about four horsepower with the LNC. They said that looks like there's another version for a, for a higher for a little bit more power in that spindle. They're saying there's options for a 5.5 kilowatt spindle, which is 7.3 horsepower. Um, you can order your sole now with either a 10,000 RPM spindle cartridge, 12,000. Uh, apparently, a 30,000 one is optional, but that's a, that's a different type, I believe. The 30,000 one. I don't think you'd have much torque with that. Um, once again, it's a it's a it's a tooth poly V belt um, BT30, or you can order HSK32, uh, and it is still capable of rigid tapping straight out of the box. All right. Now they're claiming the feed rates that they can get with the uh, Siemens and the Sile configurations. They're stipulating about 30 meters per minute with the lower. That's with the Sile or Siemens controller with the LNC controller. I have a LNC, which is a Taiwanese controller. It's fine. It's been fine for me, but um, would I recommend it to, to other people? I think if you've got the money, go with the Siemens controller, to be honest with you. Um, so I think 15 meters per minute, it looks like with the LNC. Now, I believe the table, the table has changed. Now, if you look at my table in my previous videos, you'll notice that it looks like a traditional manual milling machine table. Now, the new table is, is better suited for CNC, and I'll bring that up on the screen for you here now. You can see those pockets on the end have been removed, which allows the coolant and waste to flow off the end of the tables. And that was something that disappointed me with this table. I had those little pockets on the end, and it's really, really annoying. So the newer table is better. I'll, I'll put up some photos here. Uh, talking about accuracy before, guys, so how about I play a couple of videos, really quick videos. Now, these were provided to me by Mr. Zhu from the factory. I didn't go there and shoot them, so the, the, I don't know how good the quality is. Uh, let's flick over and have a look at those. What did you think of that? It's pretty good accuracy. If you look at the, as they, especially as they were sweeping down through the Z, there wasn't much deviation over that full length of travel. You got to remember that's about, uh, you know, 12, 13 inches, you know, 300 millimeters that they swept that. Uh, I'll bring a photo up on the screen now. And we're looking at these sides. This would be a right side view of the machine. And you're going to see that epoxy granite base, the epoxy granite Z column upright. Now, if you look at the saddle, so the milling machine saddle, that is still cast steel, okay? So the saddle itself is an epoxy granite, and of course the table, the, the milling table is also a cast steel as well. Um, I believe that they've gone up the specs a little bit too, okay? So they've gone up the specs with the components. Uh, so the epoxy granite they're using is from a company called uh, Gurit, G-U-R-I-T. Uh, apparently, they've had over 30 years experience in this uh, composite materials. I can, I can put this PDF document up at the bottom of my video if you like. I'll, um, I'll share it through Autodesk A360. I'll provide a link there for you. You can open up and have a look at it yourself. Uh, I believe the roller bearings are FAG, FAG, FAG bearings. Not the best name, is it? Uh, <laughs> um, so there's some really, there's some really high-end uh, bearings, FAG. I know I've heard of them before. Couplings are by R and R and W, and protective covers uh, from another. So they, it looks like they're putting really good gear into this machine as well. And once again, they're using um, high wind linear rails and a combination. It looks like high wind ball screws or another another ball screw company called THK. 
Okay, so you may be wondering what controllers are available with the new uh, 2020 uh, range of X7 CNC mills. And it looks like Sile are giving you three options. And it's good to see, I, they were giving an option of, a, of Mark III or Mark IV. And uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in getting the computer away from the machine. I, I personally, myself, and this is my opinion, which is worth nothing, I would prefer to have a controller mounted to the machine like this here and not have you know, my, my computer you know, running the machine. I think that's a little bit more hobbyist if you ask me. So they're giving you uh, three controller options now. So the three controllers they've decided to go with are LNC 6800. Uh, mine's an earlier LNC 5800, so apparently the, it, this must have gone up one. I believe it's a three or a fourth axis controller. Uh, of course, they're also offering a 22MA, and if I just go back here, I'll, I'll show these photos on the screen as I discuss them. So this controller called a Syntec, now I haven't heard of them before. Um, I don't know if they're Chinese or Taiwanese, so Syntec, S-Y-N-T-E-C. I'm unsure of where they're where they're made. They look like a look like a good controller. Uh, now, of course, the other controller that they, that they offer, and they've been offering this for a while, is the Siemens uh, 808D A, which is the advanced one. Okay. Now you've got to remember, I'm not sure with the 22MA controller, but I definitely know that the LNC and the Siemens all use um, absolute encoders. Okay, closed loop system. There are no limit switches on the machine. Now. If you've been in uh, CNC machining for a long time, you'll know that Akuma went um, clo closed loop absolute encoders probably 15, 20 years ago. Um, so it's good to see that this uh, company at this range is using absolute encoders. I can turn, even on my style machine here, I can have it turned off for two weeks, turn it on, and it immediately knows where it is. I, do, I never have to reference the machine. Uh, and that's really good if you're running fixture plates and pallets and that sort of stuff, because you know that you're always gonna ha have, uh, have that level of accuracy. Uh, if you don't, every time you start your machine, you have to rehome it, and you're relying on the limit switches to set that original, um, the G28, that home position of the machine, okay? So I think for accuracy, you know, absolute encoders are the way to go, especially if you're running fixture plates and stuff like that. Now the table size, uh, as I was talking uh, previously about the table, they've uh, redesigned the table. They're not using, uh, if you remember I was telling you about my table, it looks like a manual milling machine table. So the table here now is roughly 700 millimetres long by 300 millimetres wide. So it's a little bit bigger than what I've got. Uh, so in inches, that's 27.6 inches long, 11.8 inches uh, wide, okay? Yes, it looks like three T slots in the table. They're 14, they're 14 millimeter table slots, okay? Now distance from the spindle, spindle nose to the table, so the maximum clearance is anywhere, but it's a, a range of four inches to 19 inches, which is, and once again, the typical footprint is 59 inches by 66 inches, which is 1500 millimeters by 1680 millimeters, with an overall height of 1960. Now, total weight of the machine is 1,500 kilograms, so 1.5 uh, metric tons. Now, I, I will need to confirm this, so don't take my word for it. It looks like Sile are offering a single phase version, which is it's quite cool. So they're offering a 220 volt, 50 hertz, uh, with a 25 amp breaker um, machine, but that's only for the LNC 6800 controller. Now, if you want to run Siemens or the other controller, the 22MA, you will need three phase uh, on a 25 amp breaker as well, okay? So look, I'd, I would have to confirm that with Mr. Zhu. I'm, I'm unsure if that's accurate. Um, I believe my, my machine is three phase predominantly because the tool changer required it and also I th was it the coolant pump? No, probably not the coolant pump, but I think it was the tool changer that dictated the three phase. Um, okay, can you grow your machine? Can you go from three axes to four axes or maybe even a five axis with a trunnion table? It looks like you can. Now, if you get the LNC controller, that's only capable of three and a rotary fourth axis. 
Um, same with the uh, Siemens 808D Advanced. It will only do three or four axes. I believe the the other controller solar offering, that 22M, 22MA, is actually stating that they can run four and a fifth axes. So that's interesting. Uh, once again, don't take my word for it. Uh, if you need more information, contact Sol directly. Um, Mr. Zoo is very active on the forums as well. He will actually reply to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask him. Okay, that concludes today's video. I really appreciate your time and thanks for watching and following along with me. Um, I'll throw in some photos at the end here with a little bit of music. You can, uh, Mr. Zoo sent me some photos of the factory and that sort of thing. Uh, the machines lined up, which is really cool. So hopefully I'll see you in a, in a week or so. I've got a new video that I wanna bring out and uh, I've actually switched over to a different coolant. I've been working with, with the boys from Live Tools and they've been really great, really helpful. And they've sent me over some hang surface coolant to try out. So I need to uh, empty the belly tank and put some new coolant in, wash the machine down, give that a try and, and send some of these really cool Evolute end mills that uh, I believe are made right here in Australia. So fantastic. Uh, as you know, if you don't support uh, local manufacturing in your, in your country, guys, it's a, it's a sad state of affairs, all right? A country that doesn't manufacture, my belief, is a country going down the gurgler. Good on you. Thanks for joining in and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, and thank you Autodesk Australia for my new shirt here today that I'm wearing. And uh, it fits. Fancy that. How cool is that? See you later. Bye-bye.